Well, we could not have gotten a more beautiful morning this morning. And so what a great time to come outside and talk to you guys about fruit trees. One of my favorite parts about working in a garden center is how many plants I bring home. And <laughs> well, I brought home fruit trees about four years ago. I knew nothing about fruit trees except for I loved fruit. Apparently you gotta trim them. I'm not an expert at that. So I have pulled in my friend, Missy Jones, one of the owners of Greenwood to come and show us how I am to tackle these things. Yeah, I should really know that because I work at a garden center, but you know, we learn as we go. What's up guys, this is Matt from Greenwood Nursery again. Um, so today we're out here on a beautiful Monday morning, should be doing a hundred other things, but we need to do a fruit tree video for you guys because we get tons of questions every year. How do I trim my fruit tree? Well, there's a lot of different ways you could trim your fruit tree. I try to use, you know, I, I still want it to look good in the yard. There's a difference, you know, between technically right and how I need it to look anyway because if it's totally correct it might look really really stupid and I just can't have that in my yard so today we're going to go through we got what variety is this I don't know exactly it's an apple tree <laughs> but uh anyways we're going to go through and this is three years I think from where it would have been taken from the nursery and planted out here and this is kind of what it turns into if you just let it go and don't do any trimming on it. This is kind of, it gets different varieties will have different branching habits. You know, this one, whatever variety it is, is really branchy. It wants to send out tons of little branches. We're a little bit late on pruning. Typically around Easter, I feel, is a really good time. You should be trimming fruit trees. But anyways, we're going to get it done today and show you guys how I would start addressing this as to what what to do first. Well, the first thing I would do is, I don't like anything hitting me and stuff when I mow, so this tree, we're gonna cut it up to, and it looks like maybe right, everything from this point down, we're just gonna remove it. We want the energy to be up higher here, and after we do that, we'll start showing you what branches you should be taking, you know, Anything, my typically we say anything that's growing up or back at the tree, we want to remove these. And you know, you, you can get by with not doing anything, but you're going to get a lot better apples, bigger, probably a little less fruit, but bigger fruit if you trim it right and just take care of it. But definitely now is the time to trim before the tree has a you know four inch trunk on it, it's really hard to trim. And you're going to establish some really good, like horizontal branching so that you have strong branches for your apples yes. to, hold, or to hold your apples. And we should also note that we recommend at the nursery that you should, when you get a new tree from us, you know, it's going to be, you know, six, seven, maybe eight feet tall, somewhere in that range. Uh, the trees really aren't able to handle the fruit at that point. I mean, we pick the apples off and I tell the customers, you know, unless it's an apple that's maybe growing, you know, at a stronger part of the branch, I mean, it's gonna do this to your tree and it's gonna break things if you leave the fruit on there. So I recommend at least probably two years that you remove most of the fruit, especially if it's out on the ends of the branches, cause that will have a lot of damage to your tree if you know, set it off in the wrong directions. People say my branch is really wonky. Well, that could be because the apple was pulling it down for three or four months and the tree just starts growing that way. So get rid of the fruit if it's especially towards the end of the branch. But uh, so let's go through and let's show you guys how we do this. Oh, mm -hmm. 
like that type. Like I said, this is to be determined, you know, I, I kind of look at the tree and figure out where it needs to be. You know, in the future as a tree grows, you might want to get rid of all these lower branches as it grows. But none of these trees is semi-dwarf. They're all semi-dwarf and they're never going to get more than, what, 15 feet high, probably max. They're not going to get 30, 40 feet tall, so you don't have to worry about that. But So now that we've removed the lower branches, let's kind of go through and show you which ones that we would remove and... Like I said, typically anything like these that grow back at the tree, we don't want Rubbing them. Rubbing on other branches. Rubbing on other branches, you know, you, you want to minimize all of that. And then like this one that's going up, we're going to cut that off, but leave this horizontal, these, these horizontal ones. So let's do that. They're everywhere. The branches are everywhere. Oh. And like this one, take that off. Leave that for now, I guess. We're not just, we're not gonna butcher it by any means, but. <laughs> so what do you think on the top? And I'm sort of thinking maybe these two as well. If you feel like you've overdone it, just wait a year or two. You'll have that many more again. So it's no right or wrong. Yeah, you really can't mess it up too bad. Unless if you only leave vertical ones. I've seen people do that. A lot of people will, would cut it off right there to stop the vertical growth. but. Eventually you're going to want a tree that tall, so I wouldn't cut those now. No. I mean, you'll maybe eventually end up taking that whole branch off, but... So that you may get a few apples this year, leave them on. So the last tree we did, we, we now learned that it is a snow sweet, which they are very branchy trees, just however the genes or whatever in that tree, they, they really produce a lot of branches. This one is a honey crisp, and I know there's lots of you out there because it's the number one selling fruit tree for us by far. Uh, there's hundreds, thousands of them out there that we've sold over the years. So this one's a popular one, and we're going to approach it the same way we did the last one. And first off, I'm going to get rid of all the lower branches that I don't want. Yeah, basically that looks like a good, you know... Maybe about four feet. We figure you know you should remove all those lower branches. Plus, and that'll it, eliminate a lot of the rubbing up here too. Yeah, you don't want all this inside of there. So let's remove all of that, and then we'll go from there. Perfect. And now, kind of the same approach as the last one, we want to remove anything that's growing up like this one here, we will remove it. And just sort of get in there and start taking those branches first. I think another thing to point out is like, we're taking it right down next to the, there's like a collar around the branch. So you take it right above that collar and you're leaving a pretty like flush cut and like this one, like you don't want to leave stumps because that, like, you can get diseases in that a lot easier. So you just take them flush with the next branch. And it's, you can see, kind of see the collar if you, if Mel will maybe take a close up of it. But you just don't want to cut into the collar, but right next to it. Another question I get asked a lot is when people cut, even if it is a bigger tree, they'll cut branches off and they always ask me, should I put pruning sealer on there? Or I, I put pruning sealer on there because I didn't want, and my answer to that, if I had a can of it right now, I would throw it into that grove because I don't, 
nothing to do with pruning sealer. Cut it, the tree will heal over naturally. You want the tree to heal itself naturally. What pruning sealer does is seal anything that may be in there or any, any diseases, that type of thing. We'll seal it in there. We want it out and the tree will remove it on its own and heal itself. So my answer to pruning sealer ever is don't use it. Don't need it, don't want it. Just cut it, it will heal. So how do we do? I mean, we could cut branches here all day, but we, we still want it to look good. Yeah, can get a better ink. Okay, I gotta take something off the top there. The more we look at it, the more we could just keep yeah. cutting off, but we like said we don't. It's something you should do every year, just go through, because you know lots of different problems will arise as the tree grows. You know the branches will keep growing. They'll, you know, it's. Don't think it's a one and done deal. Yeah, eventually you're gonna probably take some of these off, so you don't have to duck when you mow around them. So. But I think and we good. should note that it is a fruit tree, you know, like people, oh, it's a little crooked. They're not meant to be beautiful front yard trees like maples that are very straight and have a nice branching pattern. That is not fruit trees. Fruit trees are kind of just all over the place and they're meant to produce fruit and they do that very well. And we should note because people always want that perfect straight tree. And if that's what you want, don't plant fruit trees because they're going to be all over the place. And these are semi dwarfs, so they're not going to get huge anyway. So. Nope. They're not going to be like your big old apple trees that you see. And this is a Parker pear. So this isn't an apple tree. Um, pear trees don't necessarily need to be trimmed like an apple. Uh, they are very branchy, as you can see. Um, we'll go through and kind of remove some of it, but it's, it's going to be really difficult and time consuming to go through and get every little branch. So we're going to kind of focus on the main ones and, you know, just thin it out like some of these bigger ones that are starting to rub on everything. We'll, we'll get rid of those, trim it up again. Um, yeah, so let's start with trimming it up and go from there. You want to get as close to the trunk as you can, but the bigger the branch, the harder it's going to be. Just don't cut into the collar. Totally left this one for me to do. <laughs> so we'll just want to remove a few of these inward growing branches. Anything just growing. Get hard, it gets harder to pick them when they're way up there. Eventually, as the tree gets large, you're probably just going to let it go. Because that's what I would do. better with just that little bit that we did do.
Well, she's still trimming. I'll touch on, we get a lot of questions also about fruit tree spray and spraying your fruit trees, particularly apples when to do it, how to do it. Um, there's not many things you can use on fruit trees because, well, obviously you're gonna be eating the apples and you don't wanna use really harsh chemicals and systemics and things like that that would transfer into your fruit and then also into you. So we use a product or we, we have a product that we recommend to people. It's called fruit tree spray. Um, the problem with it is you have to do it a lot and most homeowners don't do that. I mean, it's very hard. I believe the process is after bud break and not while it's flowering, you know, it's you're spraying it every week to 10 days up until harvest or like maybe a couple weeks before you plan on harvesting, you wanna stop spraying, but it's very difficult when it has to be a week to 10 days. And if you get a thunderstorm where you get a lot of rain, you're gonna to have to reapply it. So it's, it's difficult, um, not undoable, but it's very difficult to maintain that schedule where you're, you're actually you know, doing it every week to 10 days because let's face it, everybody's busy, have busy lives and you, oh, I forgot to spray the fruit trees, you know, and it's, so if there's something you can do to remedy if you have a lot of problem with bugs and things like that. But like I said, it's a lot easier for orchards and things because they have a huge crop and you know they know they have to spray every, you know, someone just does it. But it's, it's hard, there's things you can do for it, but just remember it's every week to 10 days. That's the main one I gotta stress a lot, you know, that you probably won't get it done all the time. If you, you know, there's not a one and done solution to any of this. And we call it a chemical, but it's two organic chemicals. Chemicals yes. that are mixed together. It's neem, neem oil and pyrethrins, which are both organic, but when they're mixed together, you can't call it organic anymore. So it's nothing, nothing dangerous. <laughs> it's what organic homeowners would put on their trees too, if they needed to. We personally have never sprayed ours. The most important thing is to pick up your apples around the tree at, at, if you have any at the end of the year um, and just feed them to the deer, get rid of them. But it's just so the apples, if there's any bugs in them, they won't overwinter under the tree. God, for my own experience, you know, we don't, like she said, we don't spray anything at home necessarily. I mean, we get a few bugs here and there, but the birds, the birds give me more of a problem than anything because they also know when your fruit is ready because they'll start usually towards the top, you know, and they'll peck holes in it. And that's what will introduce a lot of bugs into our apples is you'll start picking them and there'll be, you know, birds will stab holes in the top and well, the bugs just get right in there and rot the whole apple out in no time. So. And they only do it when they're ripe. Yeah, and then the birds are super smart. If you want to know when your apples are about ready, watch the birds. They know everything, cherry trees, any of those. If you want to know when they're ready or close to ready, the birds will be just hovering around them. So that's kind of my two cents on spring. Like I said, very difficult to maintain that schedule and people have busy lives and there, there is something you can do, but there's a hose end sprayer you can yeah. attach to your hose and like get up pretty high if you've got a big tree. Because as that tree gets bigger and bigger, it's harder and harder to keep spraying. So, and we also want to talk about tree protectors, like how to use tree protectors, where, you know, when you should do it. And for the winter, you definitely want tree protectors on here. And you know, you want to find one that at least goes up to these top set of branches for the winter. We recommend that you know you take them off for the summer months and those types of things because you know you can get this one's getting this would be a little too small. A little too small, but I mean you can see that the bugs as ants, you know, you don't really want them messing, disturbing your tree. You can see as we first pulled it off, I mean it was just full of ants behind there. But mice will also sometimes get up in those bigger ones and they'll build nests which can rot out your tree at the bottom without you even knowing what's going on because it's hidden behind the tree protector. So if so especially for the winter, you want tree protectors on there and hopefully, you know, really high. Some people experienced this year, I mean the snow was six feet deep. Well, 
deer and rabbits did major damage to tops of these things and eating all the way around it. But, and we get a lot of issues where people ask, you know, well, I got a lot of deer and rabbits around too. And it's like, well, if you must, I would rather see you leave that tree protector on even through the year. If you know you have deer and rabbit problems, you can leave it on there, but you should at least go out every few weeks at minimum and pull that tree protector off and make sure there's nothing doing damage behind it. Any rodents, bugs, and you know, just pay attention to it if you have to leave them on there. But definitely for the winter, deer and rabbits, that's their favorite. They will go right for your fruit trees. Hands down, if you got anything in your yard, they will pick that out first and destroy it, so. With a really bad problem might want to just put a big fence around them. Yep, a lot of people will put fence posts and they'll put fences around. You know, as these trees get bigger, what, five, six, seven, eight years, usually they don't bother anything, but they love the little ones. The more tender, the harder it's going to be to keep them off of it. So whatever you got to do to protect that tree, do it when it's little. Mm -hmm.